Like, in hand, hold out your hand uh, upside down. Okay, it's going. You can edit it. Is it what? It's going, but you can edit. This is the philosopher's scenario. Here we have my two friends, the philosophers. They're going to be traveling to Japan very soon. They're studying and they're practicing how to use chopsticks. It's also very formal in Japan. They need to learn to take turns. Well, guys, go ahead and eat your meal. Obviously, these two schmucks will continue doing this indefinitely. This is an example of deadlock. An actual operating system example like this would be if you had two processes and both needed the same two resources, say the hard drive and the CD player. One process has already had the CD player allocated to it, the other has already had the hard drive allocated to it. They take turns trying to get a hold of the, of the other's resource, but since the other resource is already taken, they can't. How would we go about dealing with this? couple different methods. Philosopher A, what resources do you need to eat your meal? I need two chopsticks. Take two chopsticks. Philosopher B, what resources do you need to eat your meal? Two chopsticks. I don't have two chopsticks, but as soon as I get them, I'll give them to you. Philosopher A will eventually complete his meal and give the chopsticks to Philosopher B. There will be nothing left to eat, but well, that's too damn bad. However, let's say we're in a situation where deadlock has already occurred. Hmm. All right, that's long enough. You two are obviously getting nothing done. You're the uh, so that's active right now. Put down all your resources. This is called timeout. The way this would work in an actual operating system is the first method would involve ensuring that every process has all the resources it needs ahead of time. However, this can be inefficient because if a process needs to use a resource only once, it can tie up that resource for an extremely long length of time and prevent other uh, processes from using it. The second method for dealing with this situation is timeout in which if two processes behave as if they are in deadlock for long enough, eventually they run out of ma uh, clock ticks and you tell one to release all its resources, thus ensuring that any processes that are deadlocked with it can get any re all the resources they need. This concludes our video on the, the deadlock scenario, the dining philosophy.